In this video, we're going to be talking about how to write equations for different story problems. Every time we go to write an equation from a word problem, we're going to go through these four steps here to help us be able to figure out what we need to know and make sure we get the equation right. So the first thing we're always going to do is define the variable. When we define the variable, this is just the, the letter that we're using to represent our unknown. We want to make sure that we know what it's representing in our equation. Second, we're always going to try to set up an equation where one side is an action and the other side is a result. So we're going to ask ourselves in the story or in the, the problem what's happening and then what's the result of that action happening. And then we're going to set those equal to each other. The third thing we'll do is solve the equation. And our final step, you always want to make sure that you check your answer. That way if we plug our um, answer back into our original equation, we know that we did it right, or if we take our answer and apply it back to the problem we were originally given or the story situation, we can see if that makes sense and if that's a reasonable answer. We're going to go through a few examples here. Um, our first example says John gets paid $20 a day plus $5 for each cake he decorates. Today he made $110. Write and solve an equation to determine how many cakes he made. So again, the first thing we're going to do is define our variable and so our variable is always representing what we don't know. When I read through this, I notice that he gets paid $20 a day. I know that. He also gets paid an additional $5 for each cake that he decorates, and he makes a total of $110. Now, the thing that I don't know in here is this part. It's kind of hidden in here. I don't know how many cakes he's made right here. I know that he's getting $5 for each one, but I don't know how many he's made. Okay, so X in here is going to represent the number of cakes that John makes. Next we're going to go ahead and write our equation where we have an action on one side and a result on the other. A lot of times it's really easy to figure out what the result is. That's like the ending amount. Um, and I notice right here it says that today he made $110. So he goes to work and he comes home with $110. That's our result. So we'll write that on the right side of our equation. Now we go to the, back to the left side and we ask, well, how did he get that $110? Well, again, as I read through this, he's paid $20, so he already has $20 just for showing up to work, plus $5 for each cake that he makes. So that means 5 times the number of cakes that he makes. So our equation is going to be 20 plus 5x is equal to 110. Now we're going to go ahead and solve this equation here. The first thing I'm going to do <clears throat> is subtract 20 from both sides. Cancels it on that side. Now I have 5x is equal to 90. And then I'm going to go ahead and divide by 5. And when I divide by 5, I have to do that on both sides. Cancels out over here. And I end up with x is equal to 18. So my answer would be 18 cakes. Let's move on to our second problem here. Our second situation is actually very similar. Uh, now we're just going to use some decimals in here until we're talking about some more money. Um, in this one it says Payson rides in a taxi that charges $6 plus an additional $0.75 cents per mile. Write and solve an equation to determine how many miles he traveled if he owes $12. So again, first we're going to define our variable. In this case, um, the only thing that we don't know is how many miles. It's found here, this idea of per mile, and also right here, and the question says to solve an equation to determine how many miles he traveled. Well, that means we don't know how many miles. So x is representing miles pace and traveled. And again, we're going to write our equation as an action and a result. I know at the end of his trip he owes $12. And it looks like the here that he got charged $6 just for getting into the taxi, plus an additional 75 cents per mile. So 75 cents for each mile, we're going to multiply those two together. Now again, we're going to go to solve. We're going to subtract 6 from both sides. That leaves us with 0.75x, or 75 cents, is equal to 6. And then we're going to divide both sides by 0.75. Cancels it out on this side. And 6 divided by 0.75 is equal to 8. So x is equal to 8. So our answer would be 8 miles. And we'll write in the equation back down here. So again, number 2, very similar to our first problem there. Uh, set up with your, your basic equation there. 
We'll flip it over to the back side and try a couple more. Now number three says, Sarah thinks of a number multiplied by three and then adds seven. Her answer is 34. Write and solve an equation to determine what number she was thinking of. So in this case, when I'm thinking of x, x is the number that Sarah thinks of because that's what I don't know in this problem. So this is the number Sarah thinks of. So again, action and a result. She's going to do something over here. She's thinking of a number and doing a bunch of stuff to it. And in the end, her answer is 34. So that's our, our result side is the 34. Now we need to come up with the left side of our equation. Well, if she thinks of a number, that number I'm going to represent with x. She's multiplying that number by 3 first, and then she's adding 7. So I can do x times 3 and use my dot, um, but that's more frequently written as just 3 times x. x times 3, 3 times x is the same thing. So she does this first. And then, after she does that, she adds 7. So our equation becomes 3x plus 7 is equal to 34. And of course, we need to go ahead and uh, answer this question to figure out what number it was. So we need to solve. So we subtract 7. Subtract 7. That leaves us with 3x is equal to 27. Divide by 3 and divide by 3. x is going to equal 9. So here we would have x is equal to 9 is our answer. Now again, all of these problems that we do, we want to go back and check our answer. Um, so this one is a really good one to go all the way back to the original problem to recheck. Because I can take 9 and I can just follow the same steps uh, that Sarah did here. So first, if she thinks of a number, if the number is 9, that's what I've solved it to be, I just need to go through the same steps and see if I get the same answer as her. So if I take 9 and I multiply it by 3, I'm at 27. And then if I add 7 to that, 27 plus 7 is 34. So I know that I set up my equation correctly because when I follow the same steps that she followed, I end up with the same answer. So let's go on to number 4 because number 4 looks really similar to the previous problem, but our equation is actually going to look a lot different. So here it says Jimmy thinks of a number, subtracts 8, then multiplies by 4. His answer is negative 40. So again, our variable is still going to represent uh, the number, this time it's that Jimmy thinks of. We don't know what it is yet. And we have an action on one side and our result on the other. His answer is negative 40, so our result is negative 40. And now over here, he thinks of a number, that's still x. The first thing he does is subtract 8. Okay, and then he multiplies by 4, but the thing is he takes this quantity first and multiplies whatever he gets after he subtracts 8 and multiplies that number by 4. So I can't just put a times 4 at the end because that would mean he's just multiplying the 8 times the 4 and really just subtracting 32 from his answer. Okay, but he did this in a specific order. He subtracted 8 first and then he multiplied by 7. So if we want to make sure in this problem that we're subtracting the 8 first, we need to put parentheses around it. And now we can multiply this whole quantity by 4. Again, I can write that as times 4 behind it, or I can put the 4 out in front and know that it's 4 times a parentheses there. So our equation is going to look like 4 times x minus 8 there is equal to negative 40. But these parentheses are really important because now when I go to solve this problem, I can use the distributive property and get 4x minus 32 is equal to negative 40. And now I can just go ahead and solve this. I'm going to add 32 add 32, and I end up with 4x is equal to negative 8, and then I know that 4 times negative 2 is equal to negative 8, so my answer would be x is equal to negative 2. Now I can go back and put this back into the original up here and see if I get the same thing when I do it in that order. Um, so if I take my negative 2, and that's the number that Jimmy thinks of, means he thought of negative 2 and subtracted 8, that means he'd be at negative 10, multiplies negative 10 by 4, and now he's at negative 40. So it does appear that we did indeed write that, that equation correctly. Alright, and our very last example right here uses a diagram below. Um, and it says the sum of angles in a triangle is 180. So again, the word sum means addition. Um, and when we say the sum of angles, that means all three of the angles added together have to total 180. Um, so in this problem, x, our variable, is actually just an unknown number that makes all of these angles add to 180. So our description is kind of long for x. It would be an unknown 
number that makes the angles add to 180 degrees. So a little bit lengthy there, um, but that's what x is representing here. And when we set it up as an action and a result, the result is that all of the angles need to add to 180. And the action that gets in there is adding all three of these together. So we have a 30 here, and we add our 17x plus 10, and then we add 18x. So that's our equation there. Again, you can kind of rearrange the order of these. It doesn't matter. They're all positives. Um, they're just being added together. Then we'll go ahead and simplify our equation. Uh, so 30 plus 10 is 40. And then we have 17 plus 18. That would be 35x is equal to 180. We'll solve this. Subtract 40 to the other side. We're at 35x is equal to 140. And then we take 140 and we'll divide that by 35. And that means that x is equal to 4. And to check this one, I could take 4 and I can plug it back into all these spots here. So I would take 17 times 4, 18 times 4, um, add those with the 10 and the 30, and I should end up back at 180.